Competition was fierce between the railroads in the late 1800s, which led to outright fights at times. The railroads were needed as transportation links, but their ultimate goal was to make money. In 1889, the St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Manitoba Railroad, the predecessor of the Great Northern, had two tracks in the Crookston, Minnesota area. After their initial excitement, the residents of Crookston had grown tired of its monopoly. Therefore, when the Northern Pacific Railroad crossed the Sand Hill River into the town of Fertile, Minnesota, a competitor was in the vicinity. However, the Northern Pacific built straight north, bypassed Crookston, then turned west to Grand Forks, Dakota Territory. If they could get the Northern Pacific to build a branch line to Crookston, the monopoly would end. Crookston residents, led by R.J. Montague, formed the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern Railroad Company in March 1889. The citizens of Crookston held a special election on May 17th on whether to award a $50,000 bonus to the new railroad if it agreed to build a branch line into Crookston by November 1st, 1889. When the votes were tallied, 533 were for the proposal and 127 against, which was an overwhelming victory for the new railroad. The new line would be built from Fertile to Crookston, a distance of about 23 miles. However, the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern was a railroad in name only. It had no construction department, men, machinery, or rail cars to build a railroad. Although not publicly stated, most people knew the new railroad was just a front for the Northern Pacific. Emory W. Lewis was hired as its chief engineer, Edgar C. Long, the contractor-in-chief, and Vine D. Simar, the superintendent of construction. By August of 1889, surveyors were still trying to figure out the final route, but they did keep it on the eastern side of Crookston, away from the Manitoba Railroad. Soon after, the contract for grading was awarded to Ed Kennedy and George Walsh. Family connections sure didn't hurt, as George was the brother of Edmund, one of the railroad founders. Kennedy and Walsh opened an office in the McKinnon block in Crookston and immediately began advertising for men and teams to start the work. By October 5th, the first three miles of track were laid on the fertile end. As the work progressed toward Crookston, the new line would have to cross the Manitoba Railroad southeast of town. The actual crossing spot was in Section 9, Fairfax Township. This would lead to a showdown between the two railroads, which began on October 25th. Time was running out for the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern to get their $50,000 bonus. Track laying reached the junction around noon on the 25th. At the same time, the Manitoba Railroad was laying a new side track along its main line. The Manitoba Railroad had brought in an old engine, several cars, and a wrecking car, which it planned to use to wreck the opposing railroad if necessary. It also had another engine, several flat cars, and a large force of men. Three to four hundred people were also milling about, expecting to see a fight. Managers from the Manitoba Railroad, attorneys, and a deputy United States Marshal also met the opposing line. These officials informed the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern Railroad that they had obtained an injunction to stop its planned crossing of the Manitoba Railroad. Judge Mills, from Moorhead, Minnesota, had ruled that the crossing could not occur until a hearing on the topic was held. However, if the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern waited for this hearing to take place, they could lose out on the $50,000 bonus. A nicely graded township road also crossed the Manitoba Railroad about 50 feet west of the disputed crossing. The Duluth, Crookston, and Northern went to the Fairfax Township Board and received permission to temporarily cross there. 
When they tried to begin the crossing on the township road, the Manitoba people blocked it. However, the Polk County Sheriff forced them to move back out of the way. No further efforts were made to cross that day. New plans were then formed by both sides by day two of the showdown. The Duluth, Crookston, and Northern elected to skip the crossing and continue laying track on the other side of the Manitoba Railroad. However, tensions remained high, and both sides expected another clash. Nearby residents also hung around the junction. One woman driving to the scene was injured when her horse bolted at the sight of a bicycle. Day three of the showdown brought increased pressure to complete the crossing. Under the cover of night, the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern laid rails on the township road to within a few feet of the Manitoba track. After learning of the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern plan in advance, the Manitoba people were waiting with four heavy trains of cars and a large force of men. The Manitoba superintendent ordered his men to prevent any further work. Sheriff Palsrud, like this photo of a lawman, tried to arrest Superintendent James for obstructing the township road. James resisted arrest, and a pushing and shoving match ensued between both sides. The Manitoba crowd was greatly outnumbered by the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern, who had been bolstered by a large number of Crookston men. Therefore, Superintendent James was finally arrested and taken to Crookston, and his men were driven away from the crossing. Managers of the larger force maintained discipline, and there was no bloodshed, despite a number of men carrying spades and crowbars. Taking advantage of their brief win, the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern people drove a team over the township road and stopped on the crossing. This briefly kept the Manitoba trains from blocking their progress. However, one Manitoba engineer started up his locomotive. The locomotive pushed toward the crossing, intending to ram the wagon, but the wagon was quickly moved out of the way. The sheriff then arrested the engineer for blocking the road. To prevent the first engine from being moved out of the way, another Manitoba engine pulled in behind the first one. Angrily, the sheriff arrested all of the engineers, but not without a fight. A request was made for volunteers to back the trains out of the way, but there were no takers. The Duluth, Crookston, and Northern Railroad decided to back off for the day. This clash made the headlines in the Minnesota newspapers. Day four of the showdown left only four days until November 1st. Colonel William P. Clough, an executive of the Manitoba Railroad, gave an interview on the situation. He claimed the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern had not acted in good faith or followed proper protocol to obtain the right of way, and they had engineering concerns with the competitor line. Furthermore, he claimed the Manitoba had spent a lot of money on drainage ditches and the opposing railroad had not, which could aggravate flooding in the area. As the showdown moved into day five, tensions remained high. Judge Mills fined the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern $250 for trying to force the crossing, but a final ruling was still pending. One Crookston newspaper complained about the railroad war, saying it had interrupted regular service between Crookston and Foston. Meanwhile, Duluth, Crookston, and Northern workers completed track laying to the Red Lake River in Crookston. From that point, after crossing its bridge into town, the crossing was the only thing preventing it from getting the $50,000 bonus. That meant that pressure was mounting in the showdown by day six. The Manitoba Railroad had brought in more men and continued to make their presence known at the junction. They had attached hoses to their steam engines with the intention of spraying hot water on the men of the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern. Sheriff Palsrud anticipated more fighting and telegraphed the governor of Minnesota, asking for troops to help maintain order. 
However, there was no way Minnesota troops would arrive in time to help by day 7 of the showdown. The St. Paul Daily Globe linked the fight all the way to James J. Hill, who had already begun to organize his railroad interests into the Great Northern Railway. At 3 p.m., the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern workers were ready to force a second crossing attempt and began laying the rails to the junction. 500 Manitoba men, armed with pick handles and shovels, charged at them and drove them back. This time, the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern men were outnumbered, despite putting up a determined fight. Sheriff Paulsrud was on hand, but he was powerless against the large mob. Fifteen men were injured during the fierce fighting. Even bystanders were injured. A 78-year-old man who was standing on a flat car with other men was injured when he tried to jump to the ground. Since the crossing was prevented, the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern Railroad did not meet its condition for the $50,000 bonus. However, its attempt was good enough for the citizens of Crookston, who awarded them the bonus anyway. They held a completion ceremony on November 2nd, taking a ride on the new railroad from the junction to Fertile. When they returned, they held a banquet at the Commercial Hotel. On November 11th, Judge Mills finally held the inquiry into the crossing battle. Large numbers of Crookston residents traveled to Moorhead to attend the session. The decision was rendered on November 12th, when Judge Mills said the crossing could occur. Mills said the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern had to file a $10,000 bond to ensure it would follow its portion of the contract. They were also required to construct suitable ditches to prevent flooding along the Manitoba's line. Both sides claimed victory. The Manitoba Railroad said it was all they ever wanted. The Duluth, Crookston, and Manitoba officials were also happy, saying it would only take a few more days to complete its line over the junction. At 3.45 p.m. on November 14, 1889, the crossing of the Manitoba Railroad was completed. The first engine crossed the junction and arrived in Crookston a few minutes later and blew its whistle. The citizens of Crookston finally had a competitor railroad. Soon thereafter, the Northern Pacific released new ticket quotes to Crookston, proving their involvement in the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern. Less than a month later, the Northern Pacific Railroad absorbed the Duluth, Crookston, and Northern line. Not to be outdone, the Manitoba quickly lowered their ticket rates to stay in competition with the Northern Pacific. The Crookston people rejoiced over the end of the monopoly. If you visited the scene of the showdown today, you would never know it was the location of such a battle. That concludes the video. Make sure to check out my other YouTube videos and my primary website at mnbricks.com.